Hey there guys, it's TC Made with TC Gaming. I wanted to bring you another video in our RPG basics uh, tutorial series. Again, we're just trying to get the fundamental concepts that we're going to need to build our our example RPG here in a little while. We're getting close. We've, uh, we've learned quite a few things over the last few videos. Hopefully they're helping you guys get some of those core concepts down. In this one, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about building a UI or a user interface or a, G, a GUI, like a GUI, graphical user interface, same type of thing. And what we want to do is we want to use that to um, show our character's um, attributes or stats or whatever we want to put on screen that we can keep track of how our, our uh, thirst or our hunger or our health or whatever is being affected as we play the game. I'm going to do a basic one here that just gives you the core concept and then you, know, you can branch out on these, uh, build your own. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by in the RPG content folder that we created before. We go in here and say new folder. I'm just going to call this UI because we want to have a place to put this. And we're going to, in our UI folder, right click in here and go down to user interface. And we're going to create something called a widget blueprint. And these widget blueprints give us the opportunity to build something called a user widget. And I'm going to call this PC underscore HUD, which is our player character heads up display, player character HUD. And then what I want to do over here is I want to double left click on that. I'm going to go into it and we're going to create a couple of things on here that we want to display to show our character's attribute. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to grab something in here that's called a canvas panel. I'm just going to drag that down into the PC HUD and drop that off. And this is where we're going to be drawing our different elements for the character. So the other thing that we want is something that's called, it's going to display a percentage on it to show us our health um, or our thirst or whatever. And this is called a progress bar. So we just type in progress up here and we're going to get a progress bar we can drop at the canvas panel. And what I'd like to do here is go in here and rename this and I'm going to call this uh, thirst. We're just going to do our thirst or whatever, PCT for thirst percent. And uh, you'll see it up here. Now I want to actually drag it down into this lower section so that when we're playing that we'll be able to see it across the bottom of our screen. And you can do a bunch of other things with these too. You can you could go in here and add, uh, should be a place where you could add some text. So if you were to grab a text box or a text block or rich text or whatever, you can come down here and put that down in here also. Oop, I didn't drop it. Text and drop it down in here. And then we could bring our thirst percent underneath that text, I believe. Or actually, I'd probably just display it next to it. So if I grab that text block, get a hold of it, I should be able to drag that down to the bottom here also. And I'll just set this text block right next to this. Oh, I could move things around. And instead of uh, the word text block in here, we're just going to put this text and we're going to call this thirst. And uh, you can do this a whole bunch of different ways you know, to make it look the way you want it to. And I'm going to compile this and save this. And right now, this isn't going to do anything. And we're not going to see it out here. So the first thing we want to do when we hit play, we'll see that we don't see that, that variable out there. So what we want to do is we want to take this HUD and tell our character that that's the HUD that we're going to use. And then we'll turn it into something that actually works. So if we go over here to Greystone Player Character, and we go and find him in the game somewhere, we're going to go up here to Greystone Player Character, and uh, you can create a variable in here. I was working with this earlier, so I have one in here already called Player HUD. And what we can do is we can say um, that we want to uh, create that Player HUD. So let me get the variables for that. Okay, and the way that you would do that is you go out here and you right click and you just say create and it'll usually bring you right into the user interface and we just want to say create widget. And the class that we want to create, we have to select in here. It's going to be our PC HUD that we just made a little while ago. And then what you can do is you can take this return value right here and you can right click on this and say promote to variable. And what it'll do is it'll set this variable and we can just rename this so instead of new variable or variable. I call this um, call this PC underscore HUD for player character HUD. And so that's going to set that variable for us. And then what we can do is we can turn 
that on and we can say um, add to viewport and then the thing that we want to add to viewport is this PC HUD okay and then all we're going to do is just come out of these nodes up here and have that fire before it comes into this next block that we hit earlier all right so let's just study that for a second we're coming out of the first sequence creating a PC HUD widget which we've already defined we're going to set that to a variable called PC HUD and then we're going to add that to the viewport and then go on and do the rest of the other one if we compile and save that and hit play what we should see now is that we have a thirst HUD over here a little thirst bar but it doesn't have anything in it and it's not showing us any values or whatever okay so to fix that what we do is we go into our PC HUD and we're going to go into uh, a little section here where it tells us how to how to define this and you can go in here and you can look at your fill colors and your opacity and all that kind of stuff and I think when you move these around it'll start to update it, the box over there maybe I don't know um, but you'll you'll play around with these a little bit to show how this actually moves around and what you want to do is you want to take that percentage bar under progress you're going to want to bind this and create a binding and so it, it's going to return this thing that says get thirst percent and uh, I'm going to rename this get thirst percent I might say I already have that no I guess not okay so we can save and compile that now that's we're going to get our thirst percent but where do we get it from well we need to get it from our graystone player character because remember he has this component on him down here which keeps track of the attribute for thirst percentage. So back here in the HUD, we want to look at the event graph. And coming off the event construct, what we want to do is we want to say get all actors of class. And the class that we're looking for is going to be our Greystone player character. I'll just type that in and pick Greystone player character. And that creates an array of all the objects that are called Greystone player character. Well, we only have one, right? So what we want to do is we want to come out of here and we want to say get copy, which is going to get the zeroth element of that array of Greystone player characters. And then we're going to say over here, promote to variable, and we're going to call this variable, uh, we'll just call it player character. You can call these whatever you want to. And again, you're going to drag out of this execution pin to this execution pin. So, and what we're basically doing is whenever we start this up, um, whenever our GUI gets fired up, it's going to create a player character variable that represents our Greystone player character. And we're doing that so that in our get thirst percent function, I can come over here and I can say, I can pull that player character reference out and say get the player character. And then I say get thirst, which uh, show up in here. But actually, I might have to go and call the component first. So instead of get thirst here, I want to say get AC underscore attributes. Right here, get AC underscore attributes. And from my AC attributes, then I can come out here and say get thirst there. And again, we want to see whatever our thirst value is, um, but we have several different ones, right? So we can we can break this. If we right click here, we can say split struct pin. And we want to go and get uh, whatever we're modifying. So in our case here, we were modifying a thirst base value. And that's just going to be what this return value is. So the current thirst base value is going to be set into the return node of the get thirst percent variable. When I hit play out here, we should have a bar fill out, and as our thirst were to work down, this should have, yeah, okay, so what happened here is this, we're close, so you see it went to zero, it was blue, and it just went to zero, the reason is because in our thing over here, it's attempting to get a thirst percent function, um, this base value should actually be multiplied or divided by 100. So you want to come off of here and say backspace. Oh, actually, I guess you have to say divide. There's an operator there. 
and just say divide by 100, I think I'll do it. And let's see what that does. Yeah, so now we're getting our thirst percentage to clock off properly because this uses a, um, you know, from zero to, to one instead of from zero to 100. So it's working exactly like we would expect it to. When I hit that over there, now what you're going to see here is that function continues to try and run even after our character got destroyed by that other function, so you get a couple of errors here. So one of the things that you can do is in your HUD... When you go to this player character variable, you can do an is valid. And I think you can actually right click on this and say convert to validated get. And then you could just say get. And if it is valid, then fire to the return node. And if it's not valid, then you don't. So let's see if that fixes that problem. Our percentage is clocking down. And you see here, if I hit shift escape, see, I don't get that error. So when I hit play again, we're going to let that clock down and then see if I get the error. I think that once it realizes that the character is no longer valid, it'll take the branch out of there and you won't have to worry about it trying to cast something that doesn't exist. Okay, so you've died of thirst, shift escape, and I don't have any more error messages because I've converted this to a validated get, and I'm only returning this value if the uh, player character actually exists in the world. Since he gets destroyed when his thirst goes to zero, based on what we decided we wanted to do with the character, he's no longer a valid object, and it just skips that leg of the journey. And again, we're dividing our thirst base value. <clears throat> excuse me to turn it back into a uh, to turn it back into a float that um, will represent what's actually going on with his health there. Now we want to go back to at some point. And where we had this modifier, where we were doing this this drain first, we either want to set the time to this to be a lot higher, or we want to turn the amount that it drains off a lot lower. So I'm going to opt for, let's set if, see if we set our timer here. See if that takes a little bit longer. You can already see that it's, uh, it is taking longer. So it should be after 10, it clocks off the first bar. Now, I'm also taking a pretty significant chunk of that each time it clocks off. So I'd probably turn that down a little bit and not make it so aggressive. I would make it so that this is just atrophying off uh, just a small amount. But you can tweak these values now that you know how that all works. And hopefully this is giving you, again, the, guys, the skills that you guys need to make these kinds of things work. And uh, later on in the game, we'll have additional things that we can add in. But for now, that'll get you started. It's the general idea. Um, just to give you a real quick 30,000 foot overview again, what we did is we went and we created a UI folder. We created a user widget, user interface user widget. We turned that into something called PC HUD for player character HUD. Inside of here in the designer view, we pulled out a canvas panel and we pulled out a text box to we can tell it what this is. And then we also pulled out a percentage bar. We bound that percentage bar to a function, this get thirst percent. Inside of the graph, we told the get thirst percent that we're going to use a variable called player character, which we defined on our event construct. By getting all actors of a class of graystone, getting the first element in that array, and then setting a player character variable there. And over here, taking that thirst percentage from a valid call to the graystone player character, as long as he's still alive, and getting this base value divided by 100 and returning that back to this thirst percentage, which in turn updates the node uh, or the updates the value that's in this graph right here. And then we told our Greystone player character that we wanted to create that HUD. We want to set a variable for the HUD and then add that thing to the viewport. These three things are common to almost every HUD you'll ever display. <clears throat> Excuse me. You could also have, instead of running this off of a sequence, you could run this off a of key press. You could use something called a flip flop if you wanted to do that. So, for example, real quick, I will bypass these. We'll go out here. And let's say that I just wanted to um, have a key for viewing my thirst. I could come out here and say keyboard uh, T. And every time I press the T key, I would want to come over here and I'm just going to say I want to flip flop. A flip flop is whenever you press it the first time, it's going to add the viewport. And then the second time, 
You come over here and say remove from viewport. Actually, it might just be remove. Okay, so after you, uh, using the flip-flap on the A side, you would create your PC HUD widget, uh, create that variable and everything, add the viewport, and then on the flop side, on the B, you would go and pull this HUD again, get PC HUD, and just say, remove from parent, and that's going to pull up the widget node to remove that from the parent, you just connect that to... So again, a flip-flop is I can use the same key to either turn something on or off. So in this case, I press T, it fires this way. If T's already been pressed, it fires this way. That's all it does, right, A or B. So if I go back here and I run this again, I'll start out, I do not see my panel. I'm hitting my T key, it turns my thirst panel on. Hit my T key again, it disappears. And you use this for different things like mini maps or you know, things that you only want to display on there like quests or whatever, whenever you hit a certain key, you want to bring them up. And then when you're done with them, you take them back off. That's the, the general idea of this whole thing right here. All right. So again, my name is TC May with TC Gaming. Hopefully this helps you guys get the fundamental skills you need for the RPGs. And we'll be doing some more videos pretty soon. We're finally going to start getting into the ideas of picking up weapons, uh, creating traces for um, detection of combat, uh, you know, interacting with the character and things like that. Because eventually we're going to have to get a sword. We're going to have to take that sword and go kill a dragon. Okay. So you guys have a fantastic night, and I'll see you in an upcoming video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.